All right, hello everybody to um, the user interface working group. I think this is the third time I've given updates on our working group at one of these annual symposiums. So it's nice to see this group still going strong and making good progress on things. Um, I'm going to give first sort of the introduction history a bit of this working group for those who haven't been part of it before. Um, and then I'll hand it over to Anna Palma to share some of the work she's been doing on the Shrine and Act User Interface, and then we can have a discussion about future topics. We created the User Interface Working Group with three goals. The first is to understand the UI differences between the various versions of ITBT, Transmart, and local customization. Um, you know, I kind of mentioned this last yesterday at the uh, earlier session, about how um, up to like a couple of years ago, uh, ITBT Transmart Foundation just really had a whole bunch of different products all over the place. They had their own roadmaps and timelines and weren't really integrated. And lots of people had gone off and created new user interfaces without thinking about how everything sort of fits together. And um, over the past couple of years, uh, we've been working on getting products that are integrated and trying to come with common user elements. And uh, hopefully we will um, end up with um, a nice a streamlined workflow where users can go between the different products and have a consistent look and feel. Um, but when we started out with this user group, um, we didn't really even know what was out there. Um, I'm familiar with ITB2, but I hadn't seen Transmart in a long time, and there were some other UIs that I hadn't even heard of um, when we first put this together. Um, goal number two is to learn how similar programs address our UI challenges. So um, I2B2 isn't the only thing that has to query for things. Um, Transmart, um, Blowing Bay or other programs, and there are other tools. Um, uh, I mean, any query, any uh, SQL Server and Oracle and relational databases and other things have tools and visualizations and things. So just looking across um, for other kind of products that might give us inspiration for developing our UIs. And then the third goal is to identify and help coordinate ongoing efforts to improve and extend the UIs of ITB2, Transmart, um, and also um, turns out to be Shrine was a really big um, thing we were able to help with by suggestions and feedback. And this is really, I think, the focus of this past year. Um, you know, different groups who are developing UIs, um, Anna Palm with Shrine, um, the University of Washington group, um, Nick Dobbins with um, Leaf, who couldn't be here today, um, and work I've done as well. Uh, being able to kind of bounce ideas across this group and get feedback uh, can be really useful. When you're doing a focus group with researchers, you get one kind of feedback. Um, but in this particular group, it's, it's one of my favorite meetings. It's the only kind of group where you can really start diving into details with colors and UI elements and um, design approaches and, and almost kind of in a more theoretical way at some points. And it, it's a very nice kind of a complement to the normal the focus group types of discussions we have. So this is what we did in the first year. Um, it was more kind of like show and tell. We just kind of went through identifying different products and UIs that were under the foundation of the umbrella and having people who developed those UIs um, present them. So I showed the ITB2 web client, which Nick Benick and I helped develop over a decade ago. Um, David Wang was showing some of the ITB2 workbench and new um, temporal queries that were added to uh, ITB2. Um, Becky Steck and Peter Rice showed Transmart. Uh, ben Carmen was showing Shrine user interface. Um, the Hive um, uh, company in Europe was demoing their glowing bear user interface. And then um, we, I didn't even know about it, been around for years, but we learned about the leaf user interface and Nick and Liz um, have shared that with us. Um, a lot of institutions don't use these products out of the box. They integrate it within workflows of their institution. They rebrand it. They add features. They also remove features. So we looked at um, that ITB2 at Beth Israel and Transmart at Michigan. And when you actually look at the products at the institution, it looks quite different than in the out of the box demos we saw earlier that year. And I think it's really important to understand that as an open source tool, you're really able to tweak these um, to fit within your organization. I too, just some sort of, sort of quick pros and cons of some of these different UIs that we discussed. 
ITB2 has tons of different features. You can build them with any kind of arbitrary query. Um, there's a learning interface though for people. And at this point now, it's, as I mentioned, we developed this in like 2006 and seven. So it's quite outdated um, user interface and it's kind of cluttered at times. And certain things like modify, it's gonna be really difficult to use, especially if you're um, not trained in this. Um, on kind of a flip side, the picture user interface is kind of more like a Google box. You just type in what you're looking for and um, it, it pops up. Um, uh, the challenge with this one though is when you get to this, because there isn't kind of an ontology browsing feature, you don't really know what's in there. You kind of have to guess or know ahead of time what you're looking for. And for some studies that use picture, they know exactly what's in there. So it's a, it's a easier way of building a query than having to go through the ITB2 hierarchy and dragging and dropping. Um, Glowing Bear was um, uh, developed a few years ago as an alternative for um, Transmart and ITB2 queries. It's really nice, clean look and feel. They use a vertical layout where the queries are built from the top down as opposed to left and right in ITB2. And um, this is, um, there, there are two different, those two different approaches, each one of them have benefits and, and, um, and, and difficulties. Um, as you'll see in Anna Palma's um, demo, for the Shrine user interface, uh, we actually switched from the ITB2s left and right to this more vertical up and down. And um, it might be easier for you know, like a novice user or someone who hasn't that familiar with these systems to understand this vertical layout, um, where as the this sort of horizontal layout and I can be some especially in leaf allow you to kind of in one view see more complicated um, temple queries modifiers other things that are a little bit harder to do in this vertical layout. Um, University of Washington a um, number of years ago they originally I2B2 users and then they switched over to OMOP and built a new custom interface that leveraged a lot of the elements that were in I2B2 but then they, um, they sort of cleaned up, made a more modern user interface and really focused on making things sort of English readable. So uh, when you look at one of these panels, it says I'm looking for patients who in the past 12 months had at least one of these things. So you can kind of read it out loud and it sounds like a sentence describing what study or query you're trying to do. And that's very helpful for new users um, who, who haven't done this before. I2B2 doesn't have all that kind of extra text. You just have to know that when you drag something into that box, um, it's adding it to the, the query terms. And they've done a lot of nice things with breakdowns and timelines and things like that. Um, Transmart is also based on I2B2, it split a number of years ago. Um, they removed, they don't have a lot of the query capabilities that I2B2. All right, let's go back. Keep going. All right, we're saying that um, Transmart added a lot of um, analysis tools that allow you to compare cohorts as visualizations for genomic data and other um, kinds of uh, data types. Um, so then in year two, um, a big focus was developing a new Shrine user interface uh, for the hack network, where the focus is on novice users. I mentioned before, ITB2 allows you to do really complicated queries um, but it's hard to learn some of these, especially how to use modifiers and build temporal queries. And um, the, that wasn't really the use case for the ACT network. It was more people coming in, they had some simple query to do, and they almost wanted to strip out a lot of functionality and just let me do some simple kind of query. Um, so Anna Palma and others developed this um, user interface over the course of the year. And this um, working group provided a lot of assistance in helping design that both through um, online meetings and at our actual um, uh, in-person symposium, we had some focus groups that um, was very informative. The user interface working group, we looked at various wireframes, provided suggestions, and the uh, LEAF user interface, um, a lot of those elements made it into um, the new Shrine UI. Uh, we took some deep dives into specific things, where instead of looking at one product for the whole um, meeting, we took one data element, one element of it, like ontology or modifiers, and we saw how the different products did that and kind of kind of classify it by different approaches. Like I mentioned before, you can either build queries vertically or horizontally. So 
So we would look at different products and see how it sort of what's the benefits or, or challenges with um, those different UI approaches. Um, so for Ontology, we set up um, a public demo of Leaf. And uh, we, a lot of people really like that approach to how they do searching through the ontology. And that's actually now part of uh, ITB2 1.712 and the new Shrine UI. So it was I think, a real success of this um, working group that we're able to find that UW group, bring them in and um, have uh, um, their innovations and user interfaces with ontologies actually make it into the other products that we have. <clears throat> So this is what it looks like. This is what ITB2, when you search for a concept like major depressive disorder in 1.711, it's a big long list of items. It's not grouped or organized in an obvious way. And it really made it difficult for users to figure out which of these things will actually want to drag into my query. The um, new version inspired by Leap shows you sort of mini subsections of the actual hierarchy, highlighting the concepts that match. You see here, here's a bunch of the things that match, but they're all under a folder called effective psychosis. You can drag over that whole folder instead of the individual items. You see how things are organized and where they are in the hierarchy. So there's a much cleaner way. It leverages the ontology to show you the context of your terms. And um, you know, everyone seems to like this quite a bit. Um, Modifiers is also one of the things you looked at. I don't think we anybody has figured out a great way of doing it. Um, this is just if you want a simple thing in ITB2 looking at a medication, but you want to specify the dose frequency in RAT, you have to put it in multiple panels and link things by instance and make sure you know how to expand these things to get the right modifiers. So, you know, we, uh, us ontology builders kind of know how to do this, but uh, a researcher who's not really familiar with ITB2 would never think about um, building a query out this way. Um, and we look at other things like leaf, you can do modifiers in there. But again, it's a little bit clunky, you kind of have to when leaf pick one, it's hard to do this multiple modifier um, type queries in there. So this is still one of the one of the topics we're trying to figure out and discuss more as part of the working group. In year three, we just were fairly new into it. Um, we're continuing looking at new features that are added to Leaf and um, Shrine. Those are kind of our two um, flagship products, I think, in terms of user interface development. And as things get developed over there, a lot of times they cross. So something will develop in Leaf, and when we get copied over into Shrine, or we develop something in Shrine, and they use it as, as inspiration inside of Leaf. And then ultimately, I it'll end up in ITB2. ITB2 doesn't have a lot of staff to develop user interfaces right now. so. Um, uh, whereas Leaf and Shrine um, do, so it's just kind of based on resources, the timing of where um, UI innovations are taking place. So I'm going to show something real quick in Leaf, and then I'm going to stop talking and hand it over to Anna Palma to talk about some of the things she's been doing in the Shrine user interface. Um, over this past year, we've looked at things like user workflow, demographic breakdown, temple queries, and she may have some other stuff to show as well. The thing I want to show about Leaf, they have a new feature um, developed by Nick at um, Washington called Timelines. Um, uh, what this does is it allows you to select an event. After, after you select a cohort of patients, you select an event and that becomes your index date. And then you select an additional set of events that you want to display relative to that index date. So here they pick um, uh, a particular concept and that gets in the center over here. And then for each of these other kind of concepts here on the vertical axis, you see by the size of the circle, how many patients had this um, at different time points in the future after the index date or before. There's a lot of use cases for this, but where this is particularly relevant is in all the long COVID research that's going on right now. Everyone is looking at um, index dates of one person was diagnosed with COVID they want to understand what comorbidities they had prior to getting um, COVID-19, and they want to see what diagnoses are happening um, long term. Some things are pop up right away, and they're a result of the acute disease or the treatments that are given to the patients. And then there are other things that pop up later on in the course of the disease. And um, in various meetings I've been in, and of course, seen others, I see people drawing these exact same kind of plots writing their own custom R code to generate these because it's such a nice visualization 
to looking at this kind of data, um, especially with COVID, looking at the prior comorbidities and the future of long COVID. And it was kind of nice to see independently, Nick hadn't been in any of those other meetings I was in. He had just created this separately using the same um, I think visualization package, um, but integrated it nicely into LEAF, where um, a researcher doesn't have to write any code. They just select their cohort and then click a button on the side that will draw these timelines out. So um, now we've done some cross-sharing of this. Uh, some of the people involved in the, in the 4C effort have seen this visualization. I shared some of the stuff we're doing in 4C with um, Nick to uh, let him know that there's this um, really important COVID-19 use cases that can benefit from this um, visualization. It's kind of a nice example about how as we get all together, we realize different kind of use cases and visualization elements, and we're able to share this across um, the groups. I think initially Nick had it where it was just showing future um, data elements, and we talked about how like both the prior and the after um, would be good, especially for things like COVID use cases. So I think by default now he has this stuff um, centered. So it's kind of a nice example of, um, uh, of one of the things that we're able to do through the user interface working group with um, various products. Um, I'll get to this after Anna Palma um, gets done. It's going to be discussing what um, topics we may want to um, look at over the next several months. 